Guru Nation, welcome back to the Clinical Trials Guru. We are in one of our newest clinics. We don't even have a study yet. We've got the preliminary meetings. One of my business partners, Marina's here. Marina, can you please introduce yourself to Guru Nation? Hi, my name is Marina, originally from Russia, Moscow, and a medical doctor from Russia. In the United States, I graduated uh, university as a physician assistant, and since 2006, I work as a physician assistant. I am family medicine physician assistant, I am doing everything. I can do women's health, I can do men's health, I can do geriatric, pediatric, and uh, I work in research since 2003. And my research experience is excellent. It's How did you get involved in research? Because everyone gets in by accident. Was that with you? Uh, it was not by accident. I work as a medical assistant in a urology field, in okay. a clinic, um, in Cedar Sinai, by the way. And the um, doctor asked me if I like to be involved in a clinical research. Nobody know what clinical research is. It yeah. was 2003, many years they ago. They still don't know. Uh, yeah, but uh, but we still decide just like go to research and we got like a lot of clinical trials together. And since that day, I really love to be in a clinical research. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of challenges too. Now you're with um, another clinic, right? Well, a brand new one, right? How long has this one been that you're involved with? Uh, the old the clinic is involved in clinical research year and a half. And you were with them since the beginning. Yes, we just start researching. Was it your clinic. idea to do research? Yes, there? it was my idea uh -huh. start researching the clinic. How did you convince that doctor? Um, doctor was involved in some clinical research before, but he had no idea how just like start research in that clinic, and. I just like met some very nice guy who can, me and him just like get together with doctor and start clinical research. Now we're really busy. And they didn't know how lucrative it was, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, if you do it right, like we were talking earlier in our meeting, like the overhead is not that much. The profit margin should be extremely high for the sites, right? Like we say always, we are work for our patient. Patient must be happy. Plus, of course, we work like to make our life different yeah. and if uh, you thinking what you're doing and uh, everything just like done by professional for start your profit be great mm -hmm. and what were some of the challenges because um, you told me before you know you guys had audits not at this clinic but at another clinic right yes we have audit the more challenges part is a clinical research coordinator somebody who can run the show otherwise without normal clinical research coordinator and qa person like you yeah and nobody can run the show it's be that project and you have you gone through sponsor audits have you yes. had fda audit no fda audit never okay but i got since god i got few sponsor audits sponsor audits i remember some of those and you guys came out good um, so but the yeah. people watching think it's easy, they don't know the challenge. It's not easy. Every clinical trial different. Every patient in the clinical trial different. Even mm. like you have like 20 patients enrolled in a clinical trial, everyone's different. Sometimes patient not return your call. Sometimes patient just not follow your instruction. Mm -hmm. Sometimes patient not send questionnaire on time. Yeah. Mostly it's right now it's iPad and or phones, something like that. For some patient it's difficult. And education is really important for everyone. Yeah. And if it's an audit, of course audit now it's a serious, serious part of our business. Yeah. And, uh, Oversight. If you enroll like two, three patients, it's one story, but it's not profitable. Mm -hmm. You just lost money only. If you enroll like normal quantity of patients, you must be ready for some audit. Yep. And QA person for that stuff, it's really helpful. And physician assistant, I mean, I talk about this all the time. You may not know this, but I tell every clinic out there, like you need to have a good PA or a good nurse practitioner as a sub eye. You have to because you can communicate to the PI as colleagues 
but you Mate also mm, yeah equal and also the patience right and that's a big challenge because that's you really have are like that bridge between the two and the coordinators right because technically you are seeing the patients at a higher volume than the physicians right you're interacting with the study coordinators so when you see a patient because this helps with the recruitment like you're a master recruiter from what yes. I hear from Stan. Yes, I right? am. Right? How do you do it? What, what do you do? The, let's say there's a, I'm a patient and <laughs> you think I qualify. The first one, uh, my patient, it's like, for me, it's like my family. Mm -hmm. I, I really open heart for them and they love me, I love them. It's just like it's a key in any medical practice. Mm -hmm. I'm in medical business for more than 30 years. And I know how work with patient, how how to be friend with them. If you friend with them, plus if you know what you're talking about research and can explain patient like in their language, not like in medical, in their right. language, patient understand you and patient follow your instruction. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's why I can because enroll. They trust you. They trust me because they know me. They work with me for few years. Put this way, like. They, their kids know me, love me, and I'm in family practice. Why are PAs and NPs better than even the doctors at recruiting patients? Because uh, doctors now work like in a few clinics. They're not stay in the same clinic every day. I see. Uh, mostly this patient stay PA and NP. So they go to hospitals, they have too many things going on. Too many on. things to do. And you but don't. But I stay in a clinic Monday through Friday. From 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. I stay with patient. Patient come back and come back and come back and see me every day. Every time when they come back. They know me better than PI. So it's almost like uh, just as important. I mean, you can't do a study without an MD, PI. But uh, it's almost just as important for the research clinics out there to get a uh, NP or a PA on Definitely. Board, right? Definitely. And PNP is it's a two med two type of medical professional would can run the show too. Right. They need right. PI just like for some special event. PI of course must to see patient. Of course PI must to do a lot of stuff, but nurse practitioner, physician assistant can enroll more patients than any PI. You know, I have to introduce you to someone I know in Norwalk mm -hmm. who is a PA. He's a psychiatric PA. He's been a PA for decades. I mean, he's uh, he, he's uh, up there in age, but he's now allowed to be a PI. Wow. Yeah, I got to introduce you to him. Uh, good guy. Uh, I'll definitely introduce you because he's a PA, but he's specialized in psychiatry. But he's been sub by on so many studies. The sponsor approached him, hey, let's have you as the PI for this study. So I think that's something that NPs and... PAs going forward, the research space mirrors the general medical space. If the industry starts giving more authority to NPs and, and PAs, I believe it's been the future definitely. Right? Mm -hmm. And in research is going to mirror that. It's, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you told me 10 years from now you see many more NPs and PAs as PIs. Yeah, but only it's, anyway, it's MD must be some around. Right, you but sabai. Like it's always be, be, it's be funny. <laughs> PA is PI, MD is sabai. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Why? But Just it's, like it's you a said, fair. because it's fair. you're there all the time and they're not. Mm -hmm. The sponsors know this too, right? Of course. Any other advice for researchers that are new? Research clinics. If get a PA, go hire a PA. Right? Yes. But what else? What should they do? I don't know. <laughs> get good. Get good at their patient. Just go to you and ask you how yeah, how like just that. run it. How I can run it just like research in my clinic. That's right. It must be number one. That's right. After that, they can hire somebody, be nurse practitioner, uh, clinical research coordinator. But first one, they need go to you. That's Otherwise, right. it's not working. And your first site selection visit at this new clinic. You guys made a good impression on the sponsor. You brought all your staff, right? How did that go? Tell them about uh, your first. It must selection. be like all all our staff must go, like all our medical assistant, phlebotomist, front office, back office. Everyone just go, just sit down. We just put 
uh, just like special place all together and the um, <laughs> you had a projector yeah, projector you had a projector yeah, what were you playing on the what slides did you show uh, no, it's, it was not slides, it was like movie about research. Really? Like through computer, we got the projector, it was <laughs> nice. And there was so, oh my God, it's so beautiful, it's so nice, it's so organized. Oh, thank you very much. And we got like answer like in a few weeks. Yeah. Really fast. So you're, very, you're a big fan of research. Mm -hmm. Will you ever, could you ever just do research and not private practice? Or for you, is they're always connected? It's connected, because without private practice, no research. Then you don't get the patience, right? Of course. Where do you get patience? Not on the street? Impossible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Marina. I appreciate it. Thank you. I look forward to working with you at West Hollywood Clinical Research. And um, I got your bio now, a little bit from this, so I can create something. And um, we'll talk soon. We'll do follow-up interviews, right? Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Guru Nation, for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.